Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how to create a timesheet app in Office 365 using Access Services. Um, so on the agenda today I will go over how to create a timesheet app uh, using Office 365, a very simple timesheet app. So let's get started. So what are the topics today? I'm going to show you how to use Access uh, 2016 to create an app and then publish it to uh, I publish it to SharePoint online, specifically Office 365. Um, I, this is not geared towards somebody who has an on-prem uh, installation of, of uh, SharePoint, so this is mostly for Office 365 users. How to modify the app, how to make changes to the app to fit your needs, and how to publish the app uh, to SharePoint. So that is the agenda for today. And let's get right into the demo and fire up our trusty uh, Windows 10 virtual machine. Okay, and Windows 10, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch our Access 2016 application. And in Access 2016, I'm going to create a custom web app or blank web app. Uh, basically, what I want is uh, I want to create a custom web app. And I don't want to start from a blank desktop database. The reason this is it will be a local database. I don't want to create a local database. I actually want to, to create a custom web application database. So I'm going to select this option. And when I do, it gives me the option. Uh, okay. It, uh, the error is telling me that uh, my personal site is set up, which is fine, which is what I, what I would expected. I don't have my uh, personal uh, site uh, set up yet. But the app name that I'm going to call this app, I'm going to select the name called, let's say, uh, Horus Time Tracking Application. I'm going to call it Horus Time Tracking Application. And for the location, I'm going to specify, I've already specified a couple of locations from my previous exercises, but you can specify your own location. And when you go to Office 365, when you go to Access 16 and enter the URL for your, uh, for your location, it'll ask you to authenticate to Office 365 so that you can do, you know, publish your app and create your app. I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. That's actually pretty easy. You just have to specify the URL, and once you specify the URL, it'll ask you to sign into Office 365, and then it'll add your location for any, uh, for any future reference. You can publish the app that way. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And when I do what it's going, what the I Access is doing right now is creating a blank uh, Access uh, web application for me. Uh, it is going to have nothing in it, and very quickly, I'm going to show you how to use the uh, template uh, search uh, using Access to import specific templates into your Access web app uh, so that you can use those to publish a time tracking system. So, uh, okay, now it's done talking to the server and it has created a blank uh, web application template for me. Uh, what I need to do is, uh, in order to add the tables, the necessary tables, what I need to tell it is what I would like to track. Usually I like to start from a, uh, not a blank web application, but a, I would like to start from templates. What is meant by templates is Microsoft has provided some templates for you for you to start working with uh, Office Access uh, web applications. So in this case, because I'm trying to create a time tracking application, I'm going to say what I would like to create as a new table. I'm going to say, I'm just going to search for the word time and then click search. And when I do, it'll, it gives me some options. Uh, it gives me services, meetings, weekly, oh, there we go. That's the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for the weekly timesheet uh, option. So this is uh, the option that I'm looking for. I double click it, and as soon as I do, it will go to Office Online, it'll download that template for me, and it'll add its associated tables and associated views to my Access Web application. So it created two tables for me, the employees table on the left-hand side and the timesheets table that you see on the left-hand side. Uh, and it has also created all the necessary views for me. So what it has done for me is it has created these, uh, uh, these uh, forms so that I can enter 
new information into my tables or modify in information in my or in an existing record in my tables I can use these uh, forms if I if I wanted to but in this case what I want to do is um, what I would like to be able to do is uh, this uh, within this web application my timesheet table has some extra uh, information that I don't need for example currently this timesheet table has this uh, pay rate column and the total pay column that maybe are not applicable to my particular organization so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click on the timesheets table and select edit table and it'll, it will put the timesheet table in edit format for me and the two uh, fields that I don't like that I don't need that are not applicable to my situation because I downloaded this template from Microsoft not every field is going to be applicable to me the two fields that are not applicable to me are the pay rate and the total pay uh, fields so I'm going to go ahead and delete those fields I'm just going to right click on that table and on that row the on that uh, field that I would like to delete and say click delete row and it's going to say are you sure you want to click delete that row I say yes and this total pay row I'm also going to delete. Yes. The other fields are okay because the other fields I am uh, I am interested in. And that's it. Those are the very quick modifications that I wanted to make to my uh, access table. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click home and click the launch application button. And when I do, what this is going to do is it's going to display this app and Office 365 for me. I'll go ahead and log in. And it's going to launch this uh, access application that I just created in Office 365 for me. If I want, I can go back to the uh, Horus team site. Uh, but what, I what it did for me is created this uh, uh, neat looking Horus time tracking application for me. Now, this time tracking application has two tables. It has the employees table and then it has the timesheets table. The employees is where I'm going to store uh, the information for my employees, so such first name, last name, email address. So in this case, I'm just going to enter a couple of basic entries. I'm going to enter my name and my boss's name. So I'm going to say Fisal Oktar. That's employee name, my fault. Uh, employee number. I'm just going to uh, enter a sample record. First name, Fisal. Last name, Oktar. Company. Horus e email at dot com job title IT IT consultant and there we have it. Just going to go ahead and click save on this particular record, and when I do, the Faisal Octar record gets created for for me in the uh, employees table. If I go to the timesheet table. I have no records in the timesheet table, but I have a record in the employees table. I'm going to go ahead and create another record in the employees table. I'm going to click the plus button, which is the new uh, or the add button over here. I'm going to assign another random employee number. This time I'm going to enter my boss's name, uh, John Smith, company Horace, email jsmith at com job title, CEO, manager, whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and save this record as well. Oh, I made a mistake. Notice I missed an I in John Smith, so I need to edit this record. I click edit on that record, on this edit button up here, and say S-M-I-T-H, and then click the save button, and now this record is saved for me. Anytime I need to come back to a record and edit it, I click the record on the navigation pane, I click the edit item button, and I can edit that record for me. So now I have two entries created in my employees table. One is my own name and one is John Smith. But what I would like to be able to do is I would like to be able to enter my time into the timesheets table. But against whose record am I entering this uh, information? Obviously my own. So under employee, because this is a lookup, what, what this uh, access database did was it created two tables for me, the employees table and the timesheets table, but it created a lookup between those two. So it's a one-to-many relationship if each employee can have multiple timesheets in the timesheet table. So 
I'm going to specify my name under employee Faisal Akhtar because I'm looking up under the employees table. I can also say John Smith, but in this case, I'm entering my own name. For the week of, let's say today is, so let's say I'm entering for the week of, actually, this is a good example, for the week of this week. And on Sunday, I, I didn't work. On Monday, I worked eight hours. Tuesday, I worked eight. Wednesday, I worked eight. Thursday, I worked eight. Friday, I worked eight. And I click save. <clears throat> okay. Notice that I didn't delete the total pay, pay rate and the total pay uh, fields from the uh, from my forms. That's why these fields are showing up. But the reason they're not showing up any values is because as I deleted their associated, I deleted their associated uh, the record slash uh, data field and the table design. So what I'm what I need to do is I need to go back to access and let, you know what? Let me go ahead and save this record. But another thing you will notice is now if I go to employees and I click on Faisal Akhtar, it'll show me the name of the employee and the timesheets that this employee has submitted. And if I click on that particular timesheet, it'll it'll show me the timesheet record for that for that employee for that particular. Uh, so let's say I go back to my site. Actually, I need to go back to access. I need to go to timesheet list, and I need to delete. <sighs> oh yeah, I forgot to save my changes, that's what happens. Okay, yeah, I, I just simply forgot to save my changes. That's why I, it didn't reflect on Office Online. But now if I go ahead and launch my application again, notice that those two fields that I removed that I forgot to save and publish back to, um, to Access, those fields are, have now disappeared. So all, you, all I really had to do was after making those changes, I had to save my changes. I forgot to do that, which is why when I published it, even though the data field wasn't there, uh, the, they were still showing up at the forms. But the, it'll no longer, the, the, that information will no longer appear in the forms. So employees, I can take a look at Faisal Akhtar, and now I can see his timesheet. So this is a very quick and simple way on creating a timesheet tracking, a very simple timesheet tracking app for your organization, for a small business, uh, for uh, for more advanced uh, you know stuff. You, this might not be good because it's kind of simplistic. But there are a lot of considerations when it comes to time tracking application, which I'm going to go into next. So let's switch back to the PowerPoint. Okay. Now, what are some of the considerations when it comes to this uh, app that we've created. First consideration that we have to think about and that uh, I'm going to mention in probably a later video is permissions. Who is allowed to enter these records? Who is allowed to modify these records? What records are they allowed to modify? All those considerations must be taken before you create an app or launch an app for a small business. Now for a small business, five to 10 employees, it may not matter that much. You just need to be able to create and track some small information for, for yourselves or for your employees. but. Uh, permissions are going to be important. Second thing that you have to consider, what I call, what I like to call, or what I like to think of as a master record. What we created in our demo is we created a record of, or a table of our employees, an employee table. But is that the master record? Meaning, how many? Uh, let's say tomorrow I create an expense tracking application using uh, uh, using Access, or tomorrow I create. Uh, 
some other tracking application such as uh, I don't know uh, you know uh, absence or leave uh, tracking application uh, would I need to create a new employees table each and every time meaning that that somebody that's new comes in or somebody leaves from my organization would I then have to like uh, go into my uh, mass, my employees table in my uh, time tracking application, my employee record in my uh, absence tracking application, my employees table in my expense tracking tab application and add them on all these three places? How do I manage a master record so that once I enter one person once to a master employees table, it shows up in all my database? So this is also a consideration, but I'm going to address this in a future video. And the third uh, consideration is obviously data access. Specifically, what I mean by that is what if you need to use this data for reporting or for other, other applications within your organization, for SharePoint lists or for other things? How do you get to this data that you're you know, collecting? And this is, uh, I'm going to put it in a, in a future video as well. So what I did for you today was I created a very simple time tracking application in Microsoft Office Access. And this, I presented to you some considerations for permissions, master record, and data access. So that's it for the demo. So finally, in conclusion, if you would like to get a free trial of Office 365, I'm going to place a link in the description below. And if you would like to get information, more information on how to create simple uh, apps using Office 365 and using access services for your own uh, organization, please go ahead and email us at info at horusts.com or visit us online at horusts.com. And if you like this video, please give us, give us give me a like below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment sections below. And for more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.